Hey guys, I'm E, and here's the thing. If you're an up-and-coming videographer who loves to produce basketball content, you probably watch a lot of it online and on TV. And when you do, you're probably thinking, man, I wish I had five cameras and a team of people to help me make highly produced videos like these ones. Well, I'm here today to let you know that you don't need all that because I'm gonna teach you how to make your very own professional basketball video by yourself with only one camera. To start off, let me just give you a quick overview of my credentials. Outside of my YouTube channel, I've created content for Melbourne United, which is the pro basketball team here in Melbourne, Australia. I've also produced content for the Toronto Raptors when I was still living in Canada. And in a few months, when Team USA will come down under to play Australia before the World Championships, I'll have the privilege to produce all the content around that. I'll be working with the likes of Ben Simmons and Steph Curry and other NBA stars, so I'm very excited about that, which is why I decided to do this video. But before we get into it, I just want to tell those of you who asked me to review their sport channels that it's coming. At the time of this recording, I got about eight or nine channels to review. I'll get there, but just bear with me because, uh, yeah, just understand that I can't just do review videos every week. So it might take a few more weeks before I do the next one. But that doesn't mean that in the meantime, I won't be making more sport videography tutorials just like this one. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it. That being said, let's get into basketball videos. First of all, let's be clear about what we're trying to do here. I'm not going to teach you how to do very matter-of-fact uh, highlight reel that you'd see like on the 6 o'clock news, for example. My goal is to teach you how to make very creative, entertaining, and fun to watch basketball videos with only five easy tricks. And to do that, you need to value entertainment more than facts. You've probably heard this saying before, never let facts get in the way of a great story. And that is exactly what we're doing today. But more on that later. In the meantime, let's get to tip number one. Always keep a fast pace. Obviously basketball is a fast game, so you need your basketball video to sort of reflect that. And by fast pace, I don't necessarily mean that the footage needs to be super quick, like you can use slow motion footage if you want, and neither do I mean that the music needs to be quick, like you don't need a high tempo music track all the time, you can use a slow song. What I mean by that, it's that the fast pace needs to be in your editing style. Like you need to cut very quickly from one thing to the other, or from one perspective to another, and that's how you sort of always have something new to show to your viewers and keep them on their toes, which is very similar to what you would see during a normal basketball game. The second tip is to make the most of your great content. I'd much rather see a great play on repeat two or three times from various angles than to have three average plays back to back. That's just, you know, it's just a waste of time really. So what you wanna do is really just focus on those great moments and make the most out of them, like triple down on those. So at this point, you're probably thinking, yeah, this is all good and well from an editing side of things, but how am I supposed to get all these different angles when I'm filming by myself with only one camera? Well, the answer is tip number three. Make sure you film a shitload of close-ups. The beauty of basketball videography is that there's a lot of baskets being scored in one game. So it's not like soccer, for example, where if you miss one goal, there's a very real possibility that that goal will be the only one of the game. In basketball, you can easily afford to dedicate five minutes here and there to close-ups only. For example, you can lock in your camera in a position that gives you a close-up shot of the basket and just record a few shots going in. Preferably, you want to be shooting these close-ups uh, earlier in the game when the score is not as meaningful as it is in the fourth quarter, for example, where you really want to be, really want to be focusing on the action. Or you can even do it during the warm-up session before the game even starts. That way, you don't have to worry about it later, and it'll give you more time to dedicate to tip number four, which is get as much cutaway content as you can. We're talking crowd shots, scoreboard, team bench, coaches, referees, anything that will add variety to your footage. Because if you're in a small gym, for example, there's a good chance that your crowd shots are going to be limited. 
So cutting to a reaction shot to the bench or to a referee after a three point helps keep things fresh. Also cutting to the scoreboard from time to time helps the viewer keep track of the score. And finally tip number five, never let facts get in the way of a great story. See I told you we'd get there. So what does that mean? It means that from a viewer's perspective, um, perception is reality. What you see in front of you on your screen must be true. So now I'm not suggesting that you bluntly lie to your audience by changing the outcome of the game or making one team look much better than they were. What I'm saying is you should use those cutaways and um, close-ups I've made you film to enhance the look and feel of your video and perhaps make the game itself look a bit more exciting than it actually was. Take this play for example, a simple jump shot like many others. Let's look at how we can enhance it with the use of close-ups and cutaways. So let's rewind and break it down properly. First of all, I decided to change the tempo by doing a bit of speed ramping in the middle of the shot and uh, slowing it down to 50%. And then what I did is that I zoomed in really quickly on the shot. Obviously by doing that you lose a bit of quality, but it's a very quick zoom so no one's really gonna notice it. But then what looks like the final shot that's fully zoomed in is actually a different shot. It's one of those close-ups I've been going on about for the last five minutes. So that one is full resolution, not zoomed in at all. And finally, I added the reaction from that kid in the crowd just to give that play a bit more emotion and also allow me to cut to something completely different in the next shot. Here's another little trick. Find two plays from the same player and just take the little bits and pieces from each play that you really like and mash them all together into one quick edit. So yeah, once you've mastered the art of filming cutaways and close-ups before and during the games, you can start using more and more of those in your edits and with a bit of practice, your videos should now look a little something like this. That's it for me guys, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know by giving it a like. And if you enjoyed it so much that you want to see more, then subscribe to this channel and I'll catch you next time. Peace.